President Akufuado has pledged ECOWAS's determination to ensure the return of Mali to a democratic transition. Opening an extraordinary summit on the Mali crisis in Accra, the ECOWAS chair urged leadership to remain resolute to support the people of Mali to resolve the political impasse in that country. The extraordinary summit with the coup leader in attendance is to resolve the political crisis in Mali after another military takeover within nine months. President Kofuado called for an informed decision to settle the crisis. I urge your excellencies to remain resolute in supporting the people of Mali to find a peaceful solution and restore democracy and stability in the country. He re-emphasized the sub-regional body's commitment towards a peaceful transition. I'm thus using this opportunity to reiterate, on behalf of ECOWAS, our continued commitment to the peaceful transition in Mali with the basic goal of restoring democratic government and working for the stability of Mali and of our region. He further expressed disappointment over the dissolution of the transition government. It is unfortunate that this dissolution of the transitional government occurred just a few days after the visit of the mediator, His Excellency Goodluck Jonathan, who was not informed by the transitional authorities of this development. Following the announcement of the new government, the President and the Prime Minister of the transitional government were held in custody by the military. In view of the gravity of the situation, I asked the mediator to lead a high-level mission to Mali, which included the chair of the ECOWAS Council of Ministers and the president of the commission to assess the situation and report back to me. Others present at the summit are former president of Nigeria and mediator in the Malian crisis, Gulag Jonathan, president of the ECOWAS Commission, Jean Claude Kasibru, and vice president of the ECOWAS Commission, Finda Kuroma, including some other leaders, including some other leaders from ECOWAS countries. But comprehensively, this sort of summit, what does it mean? And then also looking at the ramifications of what um, the actions of the military junta, uh, and especially what has taken place in Mali, could be not only for the country but also the sub region. We need to ask the questions. We have um, Nana Kweku Edria, he's a uh, lead pres presidential correspondent, he's there uh, joining us on, on Zoom as well. And then after him, we also do have the senior uh, or a senior UN mediation advisor. And uh, Imano Bombande is also on stream. Now, good, good evening to all of you, but Nana Kwekudia, you first. Can you confirm whether the meeting has ended? And what can you say about the composition of um, those who participated? So, Roland, thank you very much. The meeting hasn't ended. Uh, for the past four or so uh, hours, the president and the mediators, he specifically selected those people who should be in there. The president himself and the mediators are currently in, in session. Uh, we understand uh, Kendall Simi Koeta will be called in later. Uh, we've not seen uh, the meeting with him yet, but the mediator is uh, currently in session. And uh, afterwards, they will call uh, Kendall to to coming, so we, we, they look at the, uh, the way forward. Definitely, the president has sounded a warning or has, has made it clear that uh, ECOWAS is really looking at settling this issue once and for all. He made reference to when, uh, in August, when they held the first meeting here in Ghana, in, in Pedwasi, there were some lay down conditions uh, put down, but unfortunately, things didn't go well as planned. So they are looking at dealing with this issue once and for all, especially so it doesn't um, delve into any other thing, especially when it comes to terrorism on the continent. The president, though, was, was, was emphatic that dealing with the issue of, of Mali is key to ensuring that terrorism activities don't creep in. So currently they are, there, there's a meeting ongoing. We are expecting that uh, Kenna will be called in. Then probably the president may speak to the media or, or what we are understanding both. There will be a communique issued probably tomorrow or the president will, may speak to the media after the, the meeting. Uh, Roland. Well, thank you, uh, Nanaku Kwedia. You can still just be on stream just in case we want to get a uh, last word from you. But let's move to Mr. Emmanuel Bombandi. You, you look at what um, President Macron of France is indicating that it could 
uh, lead to um, radicalization because of the Islamists uh, and their disturbances up north, uh, it, it should mean that the ECOWAS leaders, but also the chair of, of ECOWAS, President Ikufado, should take that into consideration when having the discussions with, um, with the parties, right? Uh, yeah, Roland, uh, you might say so, but I think that the ECOWAS leaders are going to be inspired by their own protocols and treaties. Though we belong to the international community and different leaders in the world will have different perspectives. I think we are at the stage in which ECOWAS is going to be mindful first and foremost of what is it that is being violated and will not allow such a violation to occur. But that then can resonate with uh, uh, different other perspectives. Mm. But I will, I will agree with the, with, the, with the idea that when you do not have the rule of law and constitutional order legitimately in place, it opens space for much more uh, what you would call activities that would include a further spread of violent extremism and end terrorism. And to that extent, I keep on uh, repeating that the ECOWAS framework of a collective approach to regional peace and security carries with it mm. a mediation capacity. So it's very interesting to hear Nana uh, Edward talk about what is ongoing because they are emphasizing on the mediation aspect. But they are going to make that emphasis by also underscoring why ECOWAS collectively cannot let decisions in Mali just be by Malians in a way that becomes a threat to the entire region. And my second observation from the reporting of Nana Edua is that you can see clearly they are not treating a Mr. Guaita as a peer or as a colleague. Mm. So that's why he's out. He's on the fringes and they are consulting and then they will now engage him in a mediation effort to ensure that uh, the situation then comes back on track. Well, that would then lead me to ask you, Nanedia. Um, you look at the posture of um, whether Goita and his men, and then also the other relevant parties or protagonists in, in, in this very own part. Um, how, to you as a reporter, do they look like? What, what's their mood and posture, so to speak? Definitely, Roland. Uh... They, they are calm, absolutely calm, uh, waiting for what exactly will be will be said from the two parts. I mean, uh, the colonel came in with his troops, uh, obviously. Um, I mean, the other parties also came in with their people. Uh, but but like we saw in in Piriase the last time, it was calm, it was cool, uh, because he he would also ha have to put forth. Uh, what he had. I mean, that was what happened the last time, and we're expecting the same thing to, to go on. Uh, well, the transition was made. Uh, there was a roadmap, and I think, I don't know whether, probably the two sides did not go according to it, and it resulted into what, what happened last year. So uh, the leadership here, what the president said was that, look, we are looking at dealing with this issue once and for all, regardless. Okay. We, we are not treating anybody with a kid glove, but we are dealing with this issue. So their, their postures, both of them were calm. They were looking forward to the meeting. Now, now Mr. Bombardi, you, you take a look at what we've done so far as a country. We've been able to host a number of Charles Taylor. I remember I covered uh, that process very well. Guillaume Soro in the Ivory Coast crisis at the time during the Kufa administration. And you get to find that most of these individuals come in with certain conditions as well because at the end of the day, you don't take the reins of government just uh, for taking sake. It's because of resources, of course. So um, how should they be pecked in such a way that um, when we want to settle them, they would also take what is on the table and not so much be antagonistic? Well, as, as you mentioned, uh, mediation processes and their outcomes would often have what you would call a settlement that might include uh, the description that you are making. If you recall, when Yaya Jame had to exit Gambia, there had to be a country to receive him. But in the case of Yaya Jame, uh, he found solace in Equatorial Guinea. Uh, if you remember, Chastela 
when he had to exit Liberia, Nigeria agreed to receive him. And so those things could be part of the mediation processes. Now, in the context of Mali, I don't think it might extend to what we might describe as the exit of uh, 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 Kenel Goita, for the simple reason that if, if he says that the transition charter was violated, and that's the reason why he arrested the president and the prime minister, ECOWAS leaders should be giving him an opportunity to explain mm. what exactly was that violation. And even if the charter was violated, was that the action that was appropriate? It's like somebody saying that in Ghana, somebody violated the constitution. And because of that, you take actions that are completely uh, uh, treasonable and to that extent, unacceptable. So does it mean if they, because the charter was an arrangement and it became like, if you call it an interim constitution, can somebody act on his own volition, mm. take measures simply because he's carrying a weapon? And so we don't know exactly what would happen. But one thing we do know is that the outcome must reestablish the track as Nana Edua described, or if you call it the roadmap leading towards an election. And anything short of that will then be the real violation. And maybe if I were to uh, make a snappy uh, comparison, you see, in the summit today, we have the president of Burkina Faso. Now, if you remember in 2015, when the transition was fully in place preparing towards election, General Diendere overthrew the transitional government. Mm. If ECOWAS, supported by the international community, had not succeeded in bringing that transition back on track, President Kabore of uh, Burkina Faso will not be in the summit as we are seeing him today. And you and I will not know where Burkina Faso will be today. Oh, wow. So wow. on hindsight, it's not just about keeping the transition in track, but it's to ensure that the vision and the objective that was set for constitutional order will be re-established so that Mali can uh, go back to constitutional order. Well, that's where we have to end uh, this uh, short discussion. But uh, we'll be back as we're monitoring the situation. And our lead correspondent, Nana Kwekwedia, is monitoring that for us. And a senior UN mediation advisor, Emmanuel Bombande, is also always with us to look at the permutations of the summit that is taking place.